You know, in Exodus 33 and verse 13, Moses said, Lord, I pray you, if I have found grace in your sight, he said, show me your ways so that I might know you. He said, Lord, if, if, if I pray you, Lord, he said, if, if, if I find grace in your sight, he said, begin to show me your ways that I might know you. Now this verse gives us some understanding, a little understanding of the process of coming to the Lord and coming to know the Lord. One of the problems we have in coming to God is the incompatibility between us and Him. And uh, as we begin to seek and press into the Lord, because God is coming in a, in a very real way in His manifest presence and glory, we talked about it last week, and it's kind of in the air, you know, that um, the Lord is coming. And we need to prepare our hearts for Him to come. And uh, because when He comes, Everything will be made plain. Okay, everything will be revealed. It comes, you know. And we need to prepare our hearts for that. Moses said, Lord, show me your ways. Show me how I can come before you. Show me your ways that I might know me, you know you. Teach me your ways, his laws, his principles, so I might come to know you. You know, Israel was 40 years in the wilderness, and they didn't know God. They knew something of his provision and of his gifts, but they didn't know God. This is in Psalm 95, verse 10. It says, 40 years, for 40 years I was grieved with that generation and said, these are people who do err in their hearts because they don't know my ways. Oh, they received his blessings, but they didn't know his ways. And so he said, I swore that they should not enter into my rest. Okay? And so Israel knew some of the provisions of God, but they didn't know the ways of God. And they, that resulted in them not entering into the promised land, their rest. And that rest was God. That rest is abiding in Him. That rest is His presence. But they really didn't know that. And um, it is imperative that we come to know the ways of God. And... Uh, you know, the Bible says the truth shall set you free. You shall know the truth, the ways of God that shall set you free. And we, we get so complicated in our approach to God, you know, and it gets so complicated and so technical. And how do we come before God and how do we seek His face? And, 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 you know, God has designed it so that the simplest can understand it and do it. And uh, I believe that God is bringing the church back to, again, look at the words of Jesus. You know, we've had a lot of studies in the epistles and other areas of the Bible. But we need to come back and look at what Jesus said, the words of Jesus. He said, if you hear my word and do them, then you'll be like a person who builds his house upon a rock. And, uh, and so, you know, it's important that we learn, understand what Jesus taught. Very simply, what Jesus taught. Because all of the epistles are built upon what Jesus taught. And uh, we need to kind of come back, you know, to the words of Jesus. And so today I just want to kind of go through some principles with you and um, understanding some of these things. You see, if we're going to come before the Lord, God wants to purify our hearts. He wants us to come with clean hands and a pure heart. And yet, how do we do that? How, how can we come to that, you know? And so just understanding some of these things. We need to understand that things like love and joy and peace and, and thanksgiving and, and uh, hate and jealousy and all of those things are not just attitudes, but far more than just attitudes. They are a power. They are a substance. They are a power. And uh, we need to understand that this. Each of these attitudes radiates out from us as a power or a light, a force. And, uh, you know, when we talk about power, technically we talk about power. Power is a, is a wavelength or a vibration and which has color and substance and sound and so on. And sound coming from these speakers is simply just a vibration. Okay, it's just, but it is a power. If it was cranked up to a certain frequency, it's powerful enough to crack your eardrums. It's a power, it's a wavelength, it's a frequency. 
All sound and color and images are vibrations or wavelengths. But what we need to understand that every negative, selfish, jealous, anger, bitter, unforgiving attitude carries its own power, its own vibration, which is discernible in the realm of the spirit. It is not just an attitude. It is a force. And that force begins to clothe. You begin to clothe yourself in that force. And we need to understand that. We need to appreciate it. And, uh, you know, this light or power around a person clothes the person in it and draws them further into it, whether it be negative or positive, it will draw you further into it. You see, every trait, good or evil, is manifest this way. It's not just some abstract attitude. It is a force which you release. It is a power which you release, which clothes you, clothe yourself in. And uh, in 1 John 2, 9, it says, uh, He that saith he is in the light and hates his brother is not in the light but is in darkness. He's talking to Christians. He that, you know, is, says that he's walking in the light but has an attitude in his heart towards his brother clothes himself in darkness. That's a color, the power, the power of darkness. And uh, 1 John 2.10 says, And he that loves his brother lives in the light, or abides in the light. There is no not occasion of stumbling with him. And so we see this. Yet. He that loves his brother clothes himself in light. Now, understanding this is, is, is critical to understanding where we want to go and, and understand some of these things. You know, self-pity will envelop you in its power. And the, the darkness that comes from self-pity as a force and as a power will so clothe you, it will totally imprison you. See, it is not just an attitude. It is a power. It is a force. And we need to kind of understand some of these things, you know. Every evil carries its own dismal, depressing color and its own disintegrating power of vibrations. And, uh, you know, in Luke chapter 11 and verse 35, Jesus said, Take heed that the light which is in you doesn't become dark light. And we talk about dark light. He said, Take, be careful that the light which is in you doesn't become darkness, dark light. You see, for every evil trait, you know, it's not only your power, but it's manifest as a color, a tone, and it's destructive and, and negative. You see, unbelief carries with it a veil of darkness that surrounds the person. It's discernible in the spirit as a color and as a veil of darkness to clothes that person. Now in Isaiah 61 and verse 3, it tells us that Jesus came to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and it says this, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Okay? The garment of praise. Uh, that root word, the word garment there is a Hebrew word, mate, which, uh, root word which means to wrap in or to veil. Okay, so she's talking about something you wrap yourself in when you do certain things. In the realm of the spirit, in the tangible realm of the spirit, you wrap yourself in something. And it can be dark light. It can be the glory of God or it can be dark light. Now it says put on the garment of praise. He said when you do that, when you begin to be thankful, when you begin to praise God, you begin to wrap yourself in power in light which destroys that heaviness the spirit of heaviness to wrap in a veil and it says put on the garment of praise now that word praise in the hebrew that is a very unusual word this particular word it's a it's a hebrew word um, which means it's from the root word halal which means to shine with sound and color it's an interesting word to shine it says if you, you begin to praise, you'll begin to shine, shine with light and color. 
And he's talking about when you do that, you wrap yourself in a garment. Now, we need to really kind of understand this. You see, when you are clothed in heaviness and depressed and sad, and actually sadness is a sin, it's very destructive. And we're told to just, well, we'll come to that in a moment, but the power that flows out of praise is a greater power than the power of despondency. It disintegrates the power of despondency. And, you know, it's very, very interesting. Sadness is a very powerful dark light. You know, we have to put off sadness and despair. How do you do that? By being cheerful and thankful. Now, how many of you find that's not hard to understand? We want some great spiritual answer. It's just be happy. No matter what your circumstances. How many of you know happiness is a choice? You have to choose to be happy. You know? And if it was dependent upon circumstances, very few people are going to be happy. Right? But you see, it's important. You've got to put off sadness, despair, be cheerful, be thankful. You know? And uh, like First Thessalonians 5.16, it says, Rejoice evermore. And in everything... Give thanks, no matter what your circumstances are. Now you say, oh, yeah, yeah, we heard this bit. Look, these are very critical laws. If you don't put them into place, you're not going to go any further in God. Because you can't break through out of the veil of darkness. You can't break through out of, out of unbelief. You can't break through into the realm that God wants you to break into. And uh, it's important, the power that flows out of praise is a, it's a tremendous power. You put on a clothing of light and power by praising God. Yeah. You see, most don't realize that attitudes or mood will clothe you either in light or in darkness. Yeah. Either, there's no in between. It will clothe you in one or the other. And there is a law which goes like this. So what you are clothed with what you are clothed with, that light will continue to draw you deeper into it. If it's dark light, it will draw you deeper into despondency. If it is despondency, you're, you're manifesting. If it is joy, it will draw you deeper into that. It is the law of attraction. There is of a feather. And finally, that's going to determine when you pass from this life, whether you go to heaven or hell. It's just simply the law of attraction, what you are clothed in. It will draw you one way or the other. And so we, you need to understand, you know, there, there's some primary virtues which Jesus talked about, particularly in the, in the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes, which are critical for us to understand and do. Now, you know, faith, faith to believe, you know, that's a beautiful, that faith is not just some kind of mental attitude. When you're manifesting faith, you emit a power from you. A very, and the power of it is blue, and the color of it is blue. It's a very brilliant light. And it is a very powerful thing. And it is power and light that you begin to emit from you. And uh, praise, praise is a glorious golden light. It's manifest as gold in the realm of the spirit. Thanksgiving, you know, is a beautiful deep red power and glory. There's love and, and many others, you see. But if you develop these things in our lives, now, I'm talking about whereby they become a part of us. Not just when we remember to do it, but we begin to develop it until it becomes second nature to us. You begin to clothe yourself in light. And that light has the power to transform you, to heal you, to restore you, to change your life. You see, we all want to come to God. God, touch me for your power and change me. God says, be thankful. You can exercise some faith. Be thankful. Learn to praise the God. Clothe yourself in something that's going to do the work for you. This is the way that God operates, you see. And if you develop these, you're going to change dramatically. And you'll begin to walk in glory and light. You see, it's not hard to do. It is a choice. And it is a way of life. It has to become part of you. Today I want to talk about a tremendously important aspect and attitude, if you like. And that is of being thankful and what it will do for you. Okay? 
Now, in Psalm 100, and, uh, Psalm 100 and verse 4, it says, Enter into his gates with what? Thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. Okay? Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Okay. Colossians 3.15 says, Let the peace of God rule in your hearts and be thankful. The two are actually related. You can't have peace without being thankful. You might have been in the worst circumstances imaginable and everything going wrong. But if you're thankful to God, it will develop peace within your heart. Even in the midst of these circumstances. You see, we're not talking about attitudes. We're talking about releasing the life and power of God around us. That has the power, you see, to change us. Okay. Psalm 69, 30, I will praise the name of God and sing a song. And I will magnify him with thanksgiving. Magnify, increase, you know. Now, it's very, very interesting. In, in first, Second Corinthians chapter 5, um, uh, chapter 4, rather, verse 15 says, For all things are yours and for your sakes. Then it says this, So that the abundance of grace might be yours through thanksgiving. Now let's stop there for a moment. For all things are for your sakes. That the abundance of grace through thanksgiving of many might redound to the glory of God. Now if you're thankful, praise God. I'm just a visitor here. <laughs> okay. If you're thankful to God, the Bible's talking about here that you're going to have an abundance of grace. Now I want to ask you a question. When was the last time you spent some time being really thankful for God for your circumstances right now? You know? Seriously. From your heart, be thankful to God for your present circumstances. You see? It's easy to be thankful for anything that's going right. And even then we forget to be thankful. But you see, he's talking about this. If you want the abundance of grace manifest to you, he says, it comes to you through the understanding, through, through thanksgiving of many, which was redound to the glory of God. The abundance of grace, the multiplication of grace. Thanksgiving and multiplication are directly related. Now, this is really important to understand this. Thanksgiving and multiplication. When Paul was talking about giving, in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, chapter 9, verse 7, when he was talking about giving and receiving, you know, God giving to us, he said, let every man, uh, according as he purposes in his heart, let him give, not grudgingly, or because it's his duty, but God loves a cheerful giver. He says that, talking about attitude. And God is then able to make all grace abound unto you, so that you have sufficiency of all things to do the work of God. Verse 10, it says, Now he that ministereth seed to the soul, he that gives seed to the soul, both ministers bread for your food. He said, And he will multiply your seed sown and increase the fruit of your righteousness. How will he do that? Okay? Okay. Verse 11, he said, Being you are enriched in everything, in, in bountifulness, which, cause, which is caused through us giving thanksgiving to God. You read it again? Okay? Being enriched in everything, in all bountifulness, which causes through us thanksgiving to God. Now when you're thanksgiving to God, when you're thankful, you set up a chain reaction. It's on, and it begins to return to you. We'll look at it a bit further in a minute. Okay? In verse 12, for the administration of this service not only supplieth our need, the need of the saints, but listen, but is abundant or multiplied also by many thanksgivings unto God. It is multiplied by many thanksgivings unto God. It's not enough to give. You've got to be thankful. It is multiplied. You see, the multiplication comes in here. For the administration of this service not only supplies our wants or our need of the saints, but is abundant or multiplied by many thanksgivings unto God. Okay? Multiplication takes place 
by thanksgiving. This is the Lord of God. It's not just giving, it's being thankful. You see, most Christians forget to be thankful. And they wonder why nothing's really happening, nothing's turning around in their lives. But to see, this is the Lord of God. The, the light generated by thanksgiving penetrates to the throne of God, opens up a supply line, a continuous supply line back to you. But when you stop being thankful, the supply line ceases. You see, we're talking about a power. We're talking about not just an attitude. We're talking about something that happens in the realm of the spirit when you are thankful. It releases light and power. Okay? And it reaches, that light and power reaches the very throne of God. It opens up the supply line. But stop being thankful and the supply line is cut off. Now, it's really important that we we kind of understand this, you know, health, be thankful for your health. You say, well, you know, I've got problems with my health. There's a lot of people got a lot more problems than you, be thankful. Every day, thank God for your health. Because as you do that, you open up the supply line of multiplication in the realm of health back to you. But if you groan and you grizzle and, and you talk about, you know, everything's going wrong and, and you go all that self-pity and all that, you wrap yourself in a power, in a very dark color, which shuts you off from receiving from God. In fact, and that power takes you further into the, that negative thing. It begins to work on the cells of your body and begins to change you on the negative side. It is a power and it is a light. And it's very, very important. Health, provision, be thankful, understanding, you know, love. Anything is multiplied by being thankful for what you have now in your present circumstances. It will be multiplied by being thankful. Now, it's important to understand that being continually thankful releases, you know, that it's a, it's a deep red light, the glory of God. It's a power that reaches to heaven. You know, it releases the grace of God into your life so that you can walk in these things. Remember when Jesus multiplied the bread and the fishes? What did he do? He took in Matthew 15, 36, he took it into his hands and he gave thanks unto God. And it multiplied. See, he was operating within a spiritual law. And it was the law of multiplication. And uh, it, it, it is so important that we understand it. It is the law of God. Releases the grace of God into you, into your life. You see, being thankful, no matter what your circumstances are, will provide a channel of God to change your circumstances. But you see, most people, when things are going wrong in their life, or they've had long illness, or they've had long, all kinds of problems, or they've had financial problems, or they've had tragedies in life, and so on, they develop an attitude, you know, of why did God allow this into my life? Why did this happen to me? You know? But the thing is, if you're thankful, you've still got things to be thankful for. There's still people worse off than you in the world. That's why it's good to take a trip to India now and again. You come back very thankful. You know, as you live in this nation. And, uh, you know, the things that God has done for you. You know? And so... Being thankful no matter what your circumstances are. You have to rise above those circumstances and be thankful for God for the things that are in your life. And I want to tell you, unless you start to do that, things will not change in your life. If you're always talking about sickness, you'll be surrounded by a color and a power of sickness and infirmity. Stop talking about it. Okay? You say, well, I answer, that's right, you are sick, if you are sick, but praise God anyway. Thank God for all the good things in your life. Forget your sickness, and it will be changed. The more you talk about it, the more you energize the negative force around you. Now, these, these, these are very, very simple laws, very simple principles, but most Christians do not do them. And because of that, they are not changed. You see, self-pity will clothe you in an awful dark reddish color. It's a rotten color. And it's very destructive. It's, ne it's, it's, it's very negative. 
and it attracts the negative to you. It's a dark light and it's very destructive. You get caught in self-pity, you'll be in poverty for the rest of your life. You shut off the channel of God. You shut off his supply into your life, you know? And he that who is thankful in all things shall be made glorious. Tell you. And the things of this earth are going to be added to you a hundredfold, but you have to be thankful. Not just in some things, but in all things. You know? This power, this light that emanates from being thankful is so powerful. It becomes a living flame that can enlarge, that can glorify all conditions in your life. Just by being thankful. You know, Colossians 1.12, giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us able to be partakers of our inheritance in light. You see, in light. You clothe yourself in light. Various colors that manifest in certain attitudes. It actually is the power. It's not just an attitude. It is a force. It is a power. And as that light increases within your life, as it begins to enfold in your life, it begins, you begin to walk in it. You begin to live in that light. It's your inheritance that gained in light. See, what are you clothed with? What are you surrounded with? What are you clothed with? What are you clothing yourself with on a daily basis? See, there's no kind of, you know, you say, oh, well, that couldn't happen to me because I'm a Christian. I'm under the blood. You manifest anything negative, you release a dark light which covers you. And it'll draw you into it more and more. You manifest that thing. It becomes more and more powerful. The Bible talks a lot about light. It talks a lot about the power of darkness and the power of light. It talks a lot about, about these things, you know. And uh, it says our inheritance. When we call ourselves, you see, in light. When you begin to love God with your whole heart, with your whole mind, with your whole, you'll find that his love is returned to you. And it increases around you. When you begin to praise God, you release a light and a color and a glory that surrounds you, you know? And uh, thanksgiving positions you to receive that all that God has for you by clothing you in this light. You know, the light that you emanate is an accurate picture of you, the person. You know, when you stand before the Lord, the light that you emanate will tell your story simple as that. And the color will tell what you're manifesting. But think about that. The problem is that most of us don't see that, but demons see it. And angels see it. And demons are drawn to the dark light that is around us. It opens up a channel for access into our lives of oppression. It is a spiritual thing. And it comes right out of our attitudes. That's all. Just out of our attitudes. That's why the importance of a pure heart coming before God, you see, with a pure heart, you know, if the, 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 if the, like Jesus said, he said, be careful that the light in you doesn't become dark. It, it is the dark light, demons flow into it and surround you, taking you deeper. If it's the light of God, the glory light, it, you know, God flows into it, you know. And this must become second nature to you must become a way of life, no matter what happens in your life, no matter what goes wrong. You see, what, when things go wrong, what happens is that we begin to manifest wrong attitudes, which may take it even further wrong, and open up channels for more things to go wrong. Because you code yourself in that, and draw, you, draw it to you. So no matter what is happening in your life, even if it's tragedy, You've got to rise up out of that and give thanks to God and be grateful for your life and the good things and the blessings and everything that God has given you through the years. Be grateful and be thankful because that opens up a channel for things to begin to change in your life. But if you don't do it, you know, things will not change. 
And that life, you know, must become a, a way of life, must become second nature to you. Just giving thanks to God, being thankful daily, day in and day out, being thankful. If you develop that in your life, and it is you who develops it, not God, you develop it. Okay? When you develop it, that in your life, you're going to find things will begin to dramatically change. Just put this one aspect. There are other aspects which we'll look at, but not today. But Thanksgiving, if you get this one right, at least it's a good start. No matter what is happening in your life, no matter how hard it gets, no matter if your heart is being broken, no matter what takes place, be thankful to God and you'll rise out of it. Be thankful to God. Or you can go into depression, self-pity, all kinds of stuff. And once that stuff wraps itself around you, it's hard to break free of it. So it's a power. It's a power of darkness. And you emanate that and it wraps itself around you and that, that wrapping becomes a prison to you. Can't break out of it. And we make our own prisons. It's not that God makes these, or even the devil. We make our own prisons by what we manifest what we give out, what flows from us. And that light, once you begin to wrap yourself in that light, that light will begin to purify you, change you, condition you. Because remember, it's power. It's light, it's power. It'll begin to affect every cell in your body. It'll begin to affect every aspect of your life. It'll begin to change you so that you can get closer to God, you know, without being destroyed. So, we need to offer all of our heartaches, our disappointments, the hard things, the tragedies, offer them to God, trusting that God will cause all things to work together for good, and be thankful from our hearts on Him. You can do that, your life will change. But you see, tragedies happen and people get locked into them. And they can't rise above them. I'm not saying that they're not hard. Your heart can be broken through things. But you have to rise up at that by being thankful to God. That everything that you have, all things that He has given you, be grateful to God, trusting God to work things through. Being thankful for God and for everything in your life. And your life, you know, will dramatically begin to change. Ephesians 5.20 says, Giving thanks always for all things, the good and the bad. Not just giving thanks for the good things. It says, Ephesians 5.20, giving thanks always for all things. Now, God wants us, we're in the process of getting free from oppression. How many of you know oppression is a problem? We always need to be fighting oppression, you know? And somebody's praying against us, and somebody's doing this, and somebody's got a rotten attitude towards us, and it produces. Now, we're in the process of getting to a point where those things do not affect us anymore. And we're not there, but there is a process. I thought, you know, if this is going to be like this for the rest of my life, I might opt for a change, something different, because, you know, pressure can build up. Spiritual pressure can be horrendous. That's been this last week on me. You think, my goodness, you know. But you see, there is a place of immunity. Now, getting to that place of immunity is, you know, got to be worked at. And the immunity comes from Romans 13 and verse 12. It says, The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, cast off these attitudes, and put on, what? The armor of light. You start to perfect love, thanksgiving, and some of these things which we'll talk about over the next few weeks, you'll, what's going to happen is that you'll start to wrap yourself in the light of these things. All of these things, all of these attitudes that are power and have a color, but when they're all joined together, they become pure light, which is white. And it says, put on the armor of light, okay? You know, put on the armor of light. There is an immunity which God is bringing us to. Now, I'm not saying that spiritual warfare will be wiped out, but it will be at when we choose to warfare, not when He 
is attacking us. How many of you know there's a difference? And the church is struggling to make the difference? Okay? In the wilderness, they were on the defensive the whole time. That's it. When they were attacked, they defended themselves. When they got into the promised land, into their rest, they only were on the offensive and went into battle only when God said. Now, how many of you know that's a better deal than being on the defensive the whole time? I mean, all night long, I was fighting with spirits against me. And I woke up this, I got up this morning, was totally exhausted. I said, God, I don't need this, you know. But you see, we are, and what's more, I tell you, the devil hates these kind of things we're talking about today. Because it's so simple, and the truth that will set you free. And if you understand these things, understand what happens through attitudes, you'll begin to change them. But you see, there's a, there's a place where God wants to bring us across out of oppression to a place where we're walking in the armor of light. Now, as we add more and more of these attitudes, as we add more and more of these fruits of the Spirit, whatever you want to call them, beatitude, whatever, you know, uh, once we develop those and more and more light, we re- light, we are clothed in light, nothing can touch you. When you come to a place of immunity. But not only that, we come to a place where that light begins to renovate a spirit, soul, and body. And even death will be destroyed in the end if we walk down this pathway. You know, there's two ways into heaven. There's the back door, you know, which is death. And there's the front door, which is glorification. You know, and Enoch walked through the front door into heaven. Hallelujah. The last enemy to overcome, be overcome is death. It's going to be a generation on the earth who will overcome death. But you say, you think, oh, we're waiting for this. And God says, no, 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 it's in your hands. What you manifest, you produce around you. And you can produce life or death. You can produce depression or you can produce joy. Happiness is a choice. No matter what your circumstances are, you can decide to be cheerful and you can decide to be happy. Sadness is a deception which you have to break. It's a tremendous power which will draw you into that and begin to destroy you physically and in the areas of your emotions. And it will attract and attract and attract. You have to break out of it. Begin to put on some of these things. Jesus said in John 12, 36, Why you have this light, believe in this light, so that you might become children of light. Walking in this light. Walking in this power. See, that is this light and that power that changes you. You say, I want to be changed, I want to be holy. Start manifesting the right attitude. Start beginning to put these things into place in your life. You'll clothe yourself in power that will transform you. He said, that's too simple. That's the way it was designed. That's the way God worked it for us. But you see, most Christians want something spiritual to happen to them. And God keeps saying, look, I want you to do something. I want you to manifest these things by choice and clothe yourself in my light and my power and that will transform you and change you. You see, Christians will not do it. They want to go to another conference to get changed. And it doesn't happen. They're not changed. Because they're just the same old person. And as we learn, you see, to manifest and, and, and walk in this, in 1 Thessalonians 5, 5, it says, you are the children of the light and the children of the day. We are not the children of darkness. You see? Now, In Job chapter 40 and verse 10, Job said this, uh, the Lord said this to Job, he said, Job, deck yourself, deck yourself out with majesty and excellence. He said, Job, array yourself in glory. How could he do that? You know, I mean, Job was in a pretty bad state, you know, (laughs) and uh, he wasn't good, okay? In fact, I admire Job greatly because, you know, he 
stood up real well all the way through, really. He had one or two problems on the way, but he did really well. But God said, finally, he said, look, Job, deck yourself in majesty and excellency. Put it on, Job. Array yourself in glory. Stop thinking about what's happening and what's happened to you. Array yourself in glory. Start wrapping it around you. Put on the garment of light through praise or the spirit of heaviness. You're going to do something that will change your circumstances by manifesting these qualities of God, which come forth as a light and a power that begin to change us. Moses said, Lord, show me your ways. I might come to know you. As we do this, you see, this light surrounds us and we are purified. We are absolutely begin to be changed by the Spirit of God so changed that we can approach God more and more and more because of the change that's taking place within us. I want to tell you, when you manifest faith, a tremendous power is released. You manifest faith and thanksgiving and gratitude together. Woo! I tell you. You see, some people, you can see them walk through the church and they, there are lights just like banners just behind them, just, just the flowing banners coming from them. It's what they're wrapped in. It's what Joseph was wrapped in, in his coat of seven colors, many colors rather. The manifestation was a picture of the glory of God which we are supposed to be clothed in till we come to a place of immunity. You see, in God, he said, teach me your ways, you know? But Israel didn't get it. Sure, they got healing and they got provision, they got some of those things, but God says, 40 years I was grieved with that generation. They didn't know my ways. Therefore, they never entered into the promised land because they didn't know the ways of God. We need to stop and go back into the Beatitudes and just see what Jesus taught and what he said. Listen, there are the keys to the kingdom of heaven. They are the keys. The keys are not in the epistles. The keys are in the words of Jesus. You know, the epistles are built on what Jesus said, but the keys, the truth, the rock, the foundation, always comes back um, to the words, you know, of Jesus. And he's designed it that way to be very, very simple. Things like love, joy, and peace, they emanate from us as a power, light, and a force, which begins to transform you and even touches others. But if you manifest things like jealousy, jealousy is a rotten color, I tell you, it's an awful color. And a person is manifesting jealousy, that light that comes out of them is awful. And it clothes the planet, they're clothed with it, and it takes them further into it, beginning to destroy them, you see. We need to understand these things. Every negative, selfish, jealous, anger, Bitterness. Bitterness is so strong. When a person is manifesting bitterness, it is so powerful in their life. It is such a force, of such a power of darkness emanates from them and clothes that person in that, that they begin to disintegrate. Physically, sicknesses will come. That power begins to take hold of the cells of their body. It's a dark light. It's the power of darkness operating on them, on that person and through that person. Unforgiveness, the same thing, you know? They all carry their own vibration, their power, their light, discernible as a color. Every trait, good or evil, is manifest this way. It says, He that saith he is in the light and hates his brother has clothed himself in darkness. So, the choice is ours. See, we're talking about coming into the presence of God. We're talking about a move of God. You know? And uh, we say, come, God. You know? I had a friend by the name of, he's dead now, but a friend who was one of my mentors by the name of Walter Butler. And uh, he had many visitations of God. And one day, he was teaching in the Bible school, and he had many visitations. And he said, the Lord came to the doorway like that. It was a glass doorway. 
and began to look out into the students in the room. And so, well, it goes over to the Lord and says, Come in, the students need you. And the Lord said, If I come in, they will be destroyed. Now, we say, God, come, come, come. And we want him to come. And he's going to come, you know. There is a deadline on it too. But we have time to begin to change some things. So that when he comes, we're not wiped out. You know. And, uh, you know, when he comes, we have to give an account. When his presence comes like that, we have to give an account. And it's not that God says, what have you done? It's just his presence does it. Okay? And the conviction and the repentance will be so great. And God says, you know, that's not God's first choice. That's not God's first way. It's his only way sometimes. You know, because the church is in such a bad state. It's his only way. You should say, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. Who can come into the presence of God? Clean hands and a pure heart. How do we get that way? By clothing ourselves in light which will transform us. It's very simple. It is not complicated. We're talking about spiritual realities, the realities of the spirit world. Attitudes are not just attitudes, they are a force which will either enslave you or set you free. The choice is ours. That's why the Bible talks so much about love, that in every circumstances we must love. Enemies, friends, those are for us, those are against us. God is two things, the Bible says. God is love and God is light. Okay, when we develop this kind of love as a way of life, you will dramatically change. You'll be transformed. That power will transform you. You see? And we say, God, we want the power. What do we do? Why don't you change me? It says, stop whining. Just do what I've asked you to do. Be kind. Be loving. Be considerate. Manifest these things in your life. And that light will clothe you and change you. Don't give yourself the luxury of being down with self-pity. Put on a garment, a light, a clothing of light. Put on a garment of praise. That word garment, that word praise is the Hebrew word which means shining forth in color. Literally it means shining forth in color. That's what happens to you. That's what demons see when you're praising God. Thankful to God, you're shining forth in a color. They see it. Angels see it. God can work with that. But if it's a dark light through negative attitudes, demons can work with that. So you see, the choice is ours. It, it's every trait, good or evil, is manifest this way. You see, demons can come along and take one look at you and know exactly what you are, what you manifest, what your heart is like by the color, the light and the color that you emanate. Very simple. They don't have to have a lot of discernment. They just look at you. Oh yeah? Dark brown coming out of there. A awful muddy color. Person's just wrapped in self-pity. Demons know it. They just look at you and know who you are and what you are manifesting. And if there's anything of the dark light there, whoopee, they join in with it and enhance it. They say, oh, God, set me, see, set me free. God says, for goodness sake, start being thankful. Start being happy for once. Get out of your misery and your self-pity and all of those rotten things. Change it, and the light around you will change. And the light will deliver you from it. The spirit realm is very, very real. It's very, very tangible. And there is light, varying degrees. There is dark light. There is the light of glory. Hallelujah. What are you manifesting? Okay, we would take a color picture today with what was coming out of you. <laughs> what would you look like? That's the reality of it. When you get to heaven, there's not going to be a list of sin. Don't take any discernment. 
Whatever you're manifesting, you're manifesting it will be there in the form of what you clothed it. Simple as that. And like attracts like. These are very simple things, but they're very real things, and we need to understand them. You cannot stop what's coming out of you. You cannot stop it. You can't turn it off. It's there all of the time, and it's transmitting as a power, as a vibration, as a force, as an energy, as a color of light. Oh, does that give you another perspective of yourself? What are you going to do about it? Okay. It's really important. See? Yep. Sure. Go on. this light into every individual that comes into the world. This is a light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. But what he does with it, through his focus and releasing, determines who he becomes. You see, and it's so important. So but we're going to develop this thing over the next few weeks because it's very important that we understand this realm of what takes place in the realm of the spirit in this, this whole area and how we can develop this to such a degree so that we are literally clothed with the Lord. This is the light of Christ that clothes us. And just beholding that light can change you. Believing that it's there, focus and beholding it will begin to change you. Learning to walk in it is learning to walk with concentration, imagination and focus connected to faith because it's a reality. And once you do that, you'll begin to see that light around you, and you'll begin to walk in it. It's very simple. It's very, very simple. You see, we build our own prisons, or we release ourselves. The prisons that we build, God doesn't build them, not even the devil. We build our own prisons because we release what we are. It encircles us, it prisons us. If it's truth and light, it releases us, it sets us free. Mm. When you think about this, when you think about it this week, it's really, really important to understand this. Your attitudes are a power which will either set you free or imprison you. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Lord, you said that we would know the truth. And the truth would begin to set us free. And Lord, there is so much for us to understand and know about you and the realm of the Spirit and how to come before you, how to position ourselves with a focus upon you and how to hold that position, how to walk, Lord, in these very simple principles, Lord, that will truly set us free. How that, Lord, these things should and can become a way of life to us, second nature to us. And they transform us because... It is the very life of God that is released through the attitudes, these positive attitudes, these attitudes of the Lord, these, these, these aspects of His nature which He has placed within us. And when we release them by choice, by focus, choice, that power is released, becomes a part of us, and we become really, truly children of light, walking in the light, transformed by the light. Beholding Him, we transform from one level of glory to another, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. And Lord, we seek here and we seek there for answers. 
And Lord, you made it so simple. And you made it so plain. The poor just, most Christians won't do it. And so they remain where they are and they're not really changed. We have the ability to overcome all things. Through faith, focus, and releasing the life of Christ in us and through us. Lord, I pray that you'll really teach your people of your ways so that they'll come not just to a mental understanding, but Lord, that they might come to a real heart understanding of these things. And in understanding, they will begin to do these things because of the change that comes out of them. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We want to come into your presence with clean hands. Create right motives, right attitudes. Love in our heart, forgiveness, trust, exercising faith with thanksgiving, being thankful in all things, offering, Lord, the hard things in our life, the tragedies, the hard things, the disappointments, giving them back to you as an offering. And it becomes glory to us. And we are changed, even as by the Spirit of the Lord your presence, that your peace. Let us go with understanding that comes through revelation that will affect these changes within our lives. For we ask it in the name of Jesus.